Finally, the moment you've all been waiting for, a tour inside my 62 foot narrowboat home. Hello lovely, welcome to Wellbeing on Water. My name is May and I live full time aboard my 62 foot narrowboat home. On this channel you will find inspiration for living a balanced life, full of laughs and a few tears too. Please hit that subscribe button so you never miss out on a fun adventure. Today I'm going to show you the details of my beautiful home, including my fancy pants toys and how I power them. If you're interested in working with me either on the yoga mat or as your well-being practitioner, visit my website wellbeingonwater.co.uk or email me at wellbeingonwater at gmail.com. Now, let's go home. It's been two and a half years that I've been living on this piece of beautiful, majestic steel floating on water. My steel tube of a home. <laughs> and yeah, I feel like I really know her really well. This is a good time for me to introduce you to her as a boat uh, rather than just May and her boat. This is all about the boat. How lovely. Honey, it's your time to shine. You always shine in my eyes. She is the love of my life. So let's start with the stern. As you can see, I only have one seat. The other one came off and I haven't fixed it back yet. I have a traditional tiller with a very cute little thingy bajingy. Can't remember the name of it. I have my fender at the back. And under here is where I find my weed hatch. It's going to be cold. <laughs> The weed hatch is the access point to the propeller, so if anything gets tangled around it, I can get in there and sort out the problem. I found this fender on a beach in Pembrokeshire, and it's done a pretty good job of protecting the boat when I'm moving around or if some idiot decides they want to bump into me. I take that back. You're not an idiot if you bump into me. It's a contact sport. I get it. So this boat was built in 1981 and one of the original designs was that this was the exhaust. Oh my God, <laughs> don't look in there. Um, and it's just not really used for anything now. So it is completely pointless uh, and often scares the absolute beep out of me when we go under a low bridge. And that happens. Sorry guys talking to the spiders. You may notice that she doesn't have a name on the side of her and I'm really glad she doesn't. I get a lot of people asking me what my boat name is and I always reply saying oh it's rubbish or it's not worth talking about but I suppose when we're talking about this boat today we should probably disclose her name. Drum roll please. Dwarf! <laughs> so the story is that the gentleman that wanted this boat built sent in his specification to Colcraft, the boat builder, back in the day, and he got the boat built exactly how he wanted it to be built, and he named the boat after himself. His name is F. Froud. I think it might have been Frank Froud, could have been Ferdinand Froud, I don't know, but yeah, basically F. Froud is dwarf backwards. Yay! Anticlimax of a story or what? So this is one of two hatches I have. I've got one on the other side. Let it open. Ta-da! So these here are my solar panels. I have four massive 1.5 kilowatt per panel panels. Did I say that right? Yeah? Cool. At the moment they just have random bits of wood and things under here but in the winter they are packed full to the brim with wood. There's a really funny story about why these are strapped down. Two and a half years ago when me and my ex-partner bought the boat we took her on her maiden voyage moored up for the first time and that night was just absolutely horrendous weather it was so windy and it was kind of in a similar position to where we are now like there's no real trees around there was just lots and lots of space for the wind to pick up <laughs> and they did they picked up they actually physically picked up the solar panels and these ones in particular 
went into the water and I was in bed thinking, what the, if I sat, literally sounded like an eagle had just landed on the boat and gone Whoo! and left. I thought they'd be like over in the field, but no, um, Johnny, he actually got into the canal, pulled them out. They're all cracked underneath, but they work. Yay! <laughs> We've done pretty well with the rooftop garden this year. Got my hebe, managed to grow some tomatoes, managed to grow some parsley. Got some lovely weeds here. And then the flower garden on this side, all grown from seed. Literally bought a packet for a pound from Wilco's. This is my gang palanque that I basically just put a load of wire around and stapled it in to give it a bit of uh, safety. I haven't actually used it yet but I'm pretty proud of that, built it myself. Something else I also built myself is this yoga decking. On days like today where it's super, super hot, a yoga decking is absolutely perfect because normally the steel gets really, really hot, but I can now go sit up there, read my book, have a cocktail, do a yoga class and then jump off into the canal. <laughs> Are you joking? I don't jump into the canal. That's for crazy people. I've got some additional solar here that powers my A3 power pack. I'm really excited to show you this. It's a wicked toy. I just love how compact this little solar bag is. Do you think I could pass it off as a laptop case? I have quite a diddy decking. <laughs> diddy decking. <laughs> a small deck on the bow of my boat. Uh, which means I can have this sort of slanted cratch cover which keeps the rainwater out. It's really, really, really important to do that. <laughs> and yeah, let's go inside. In here we have gas, two 13 kg gas cylinders with a thingy bajingy here which means when this gas stops this one starts this is a cutesy little table that folds out here is my entry to my water tank i also have space for storage for bits and bobs and two really awesome little seats all right time to change eyewear indoor eyes engage Beep. so welcome to the kitchen this is literally my favorite place to be it's right at the front of the boat you walk straight in and oh, everything I need is here I absolutely adore this kitchen it's amazing these lovely shelves were built and put in so I keep all my breakfast bits and the things that I use quite a lot of this lovely spice rack was built by yours truly. And it's missing a cup. <laughs> this is what I like to call the gadget corner. I've got my juicer, my toaster, my ninja blender, and my chef free air fryer, which has absolutely changed my life. Before I had this air fryer, I could not roast anything during summer and I absolutely love cooking. It is my favorite hobby of all time. So it has really, really made everything so much more accessible for me in terms of my cooking. So I'm so grateful. I think my favorite thing about this air fryer is that it's so small and diddy, but on the inside, it's huge. I can cook so much in there. My other favorite feature is that when I'm actually cooking, I can see inside the air fryer, I can see how the food is doing, which is amazing, just like an oven. This is my incredible multi-fuel stove. I often call it an Arga. I think the right name for it is Rayburn. It is how I keep warm in winter and why I can't cook in the summer because there's no way this bad boy is coming on in the summer. It pumps out too much heat. In winter, I've usually got these open, pumps out more heat, put food on it, cook on it, it's divine. This is super handy, I use it all the time. I fill it up with the hot water that the kettle's boiled and then I use it for tea. 
I've also got this lovely pestle and mortar made by Tom. It's currently got turmeric in it, <laughs> um, but he made it out of apple wood for me. It's absolutely gorgeous. Look at it. This sink is great. I have this fancy contraption here, which is really useful. Washing up water dribbles back into the sink uh, because I don't have any tiles on the other side. It's all wood topped. I also have this lovely tap that I often get a lot of compliments on. My God, look how dirty my windows are. <laughs> Next is my Montpellier 12 volt fridge. I really recommend this brand of fridge. It's great. It's got a fridge here, which is just about big enough for one person <laughs> and a freezer as well here, which is fantastic. It really works hard in the summer because it's warm and then in the winter it works hard too. Um, because of my battery setup, I never have to turn the fridge off. It's pretty much always on unless I'm going away for long periods of time. But yeah, love you fridge. Check out this beast. <laughs> this is the incredible A3 2400 kilowatt power bank that I have recently been gifted, which is insane. This is going to be such a lifesaver in the winter. It's amazing now as well because I'm using it to power my air fryer because normally I'd have to turn the engine on. It's solar powered, it can be plugged into a car and that is how I will charge this thing. For me, historically, engine problems arise in winter when I need to turn my engine on pretty much every day to power my boat. Now, I don't have to worry about that anymore. If my engine goes, it's not the end of the world. I don't have to move out because I have this. Ah! Let's see what this baby can do. percent after cooking a 20 minute bake. I've actually made those lasagnas and popped them in the freezer because I think that they will freeze and then the moisture in the sweet potato will help them with cooking later on. But I'm not going to eat them today. I have made them for George in mind because he has some crazy dietary requirements and he'll be over next week to help me with the welding. So that is my thank you to him for helping me out. Behind these lovely curtains that I made, I've got shoes, bins, and then all the way at the back, there are two 25 litre tubs of water. I do this because I don't know the condition of the water tank and I'm not planning to find out anytime soon. So I fill up this jar here and drink from that. The coolest jar you've ever seen. Welcome to the living area. I have a table with storage underneath, a sofa that turns into a bed, also has storage underneath. I've got my most favorite things about this whole boat is these beautiful shelves, which I love. I also have these pipes that run down from the back of the Rayburn into my hot water, which is awesome. This is an interesting one for everyone who loves tech. I've got my Victron Energy monitor here and I've got my solar monitor here as well. And a happy face. Through the curtains we go and you will find where I hang up my jackets and some bags. Down here is just a mix of just stuff. Um, and right down there is a bilge pump box is where my water pump is. It's where the water from the shower and the sink goes to to get pumped out. Here you will find a rather large shower. Oh, no plant in there, how sad. I never use these squirty things, but they do work. <laughs> Here the pipes running through into where the hot water is. My toilet is a compost toilet. There are Thetford 
cassettes, there's pump out option or the compost option. Originally there was a Thetford here, but it was not performing very well at all. It was horrible. And yeah, as long as you're getting rid of your waste consciously, then compost is a good way to go. Walkie, walkie, walkie through the boat into the utility area. This is my washing machine. It's an A++ Bush. It's been here for a while, I think. Um, yeah, it works a charm. I only ever put it on 15 minutes and yeah, it's amazing. Welcome to my boudoir, my nest, my bedroom. So this was actually one of the first things that I wanted to decorate when I moved onto the boat because there was quite a bit of mould. We're right at the back of the boat now and in winter it's really challenging to get it really warm in here. So as you can imagine a lot of moisture builds up in here and I wanted to treat the walls and paint them so that when the mould does build up I can wipe it off easily. That was kind of the main reason behind decorating the bedroom. And I'm really glad I did because it's lovely. I've got to put my own personal touch to it. I've got two drawers for storage, which is extremely greedy. This boat is definitely designed for two people, but I'm not complaining. <laughs> I also have a desk, which I absolutely love to sit at my desk in the summer and do some work and look out at the canal or look out onto the towpath. This here is my blind and I had some really great plans to paint it and do some artistic redesign and make something beautiful but I just don't really think I want to do that anymore. I think I'm kind of over that idea so I really need to put this back up. <laughs> at the moment I use this blanket to put up my curtain. Here are a couple of gifts from some lovely viewers. We've got this lamp made by Arthur. He recreated the whole wiring so it's a 12 volt lamp. Got this gorgeous picture, which I absolutely love to pieces. And this lovely postcard that Ed drew for me as well. If anyone knows of anyone who creates frames for pictures, 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 can you please get in touch because I really want to reframe this amazing painting. I tried to get one from a charity shop and it just hasn't done the job. And it's such a gorgeous painting that I feel like I've really got to make it beautiful and put it in a proper frame because it's fallen off the wall and I'm not happy. Alrighty, let's check out the engine room. Welcome. This is my engine room. I originally used to be pretty scared of this room and then when I became solo doing this I realised I had to soon get over my fears and get stuck into this part of the boat. I've got a book DV36 engine, apparently they use them in lifeboats and it does a pretty good job. This is where I keep all my tools, well, I've got a nice collection of windlasses, I've got a dual purpose starter battery. I have a Victron energy converter and have mostly 240 volts across the whole of the boat. I've also got my solar charge controller in the engine room. My favourite feature of this engine room is this really cool little box here and inside <laughs> there's loads of old cigarette tins and they've all got numbers on them and I don't know where it is but there was a little sheet that correlated what's inside the boxes. Just things like fuses and nails and screws and all that kind of stuff. It's really sweet. I love it. So here we are, back where we began, at the back of the boat, the stern, and it has been really lovely to show you around my boat today. If you have any further questions, then please write them in the comments. I am going to be doing another Q&A soon. Please also know that I can't actually get round to answering everybody's questions and comments all the time. Um, I really, really try my best and if I don't reply to you for whatever reason, please don't take it personally. It's not personal, it's just that I've got to set some boundaries with my work and my personal life. In other news, some wonderful human beings have been supporting this channel and I am so, so grateful to all of you. You are the reason why this video is here right now. You are the reason why I can continue to do this every week. So, 
Thank you to Lord John, Tony, Brad B, Jeff, A-K-E, like Ak, Ak, I'm not too sure, great name though. Thank you so much to you, by the way. You um, really donated quite a bit and I'm really appreciative of that. Thank you. Um, Andrew J, Nadine, Aid, David, He, <laughs> John B, Kevin and Ashley, Heidi, Ken, Mark, Chris C, and Scott. I love you all. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you for the next episode. Lots of love. Bye for now.